October 10, 1911, an uprising in the Chinese city of Wuchang quickly escalated into a widespread revolt against the ruling Manchu dynasty all across China. Within months, nationalist leader Sun Yat-sen, who had organized earlier unsuccessful uprisings against the imperial dynasty's rule, would now take office as the elected provisional president of the new Republic of China. These historic events mark the birth of a new era for China. For the first time in recorded history, the country was not ruled by an emperor. Sun Yat-sen, the visionary leader who helped bring about these dramatic changes, was born in 1866 into a peasant family in southern China. As a young man, he briefly practiced medicine in Hong Kong. But Sun's real interests lay elsewhere. He soon embarked on what would become the defining mission of his life, to free China from the grip of the corrupt and incompetent ruling Manchu dynasty, headed by the Empress Dowager Su Shi. Sun's dream was to establish a modern democratic state free from foreign imperialism and control. After Sun participated in a failed revolt against the Manchu dynasty in 1895, he went into exile. For the next 16 years, Sun traveled the globe, speaking eloquently about the need for radical democratic reforms in China. In 1905, Sun articulated the core ideas at the heart of his vision for a new China, which he called the three principles of the people. The three principles were nationalism, democracy, and the livelihood of the people. But Sun's repeated attempts to incite rebellion in China met with failure until the revolt at Wuchang erupted on October 10, 1911, and quickly spread across the country. Sun returned to China, and on January 1, 1912, he took office as the provisional president of the republic. But Sun was quickly forced to give up his position to the powerful northern warlord Yuan Shikai in order to avoid nationwide civil war. In 1913, when Yuan Shikai betrayed the republic and moved to make himself emperor, Sun fled to Japan, where he reorganized the Nationalist Party, or Gumindong, under his personal control. Finally, in 1921, Sun established a republican government in Canton, though it controlled only a limited area in southern China. By 1924, Sun's government was receiving support from communist Russia in the form of money, military equipment, and training. In return for this Russian aid, Sun agreed to allow the Chinese Communist Party into his government. In 1925, while on a mission to achieve his dream of national unification, Sun Yat-sen died of cancer in Beijing. Sun's protege, Chiang Kai-shek, rose to power after Sun's death and began a decades-long battle with the communists led by his arch-rival, Mao Zedong, to determine who would control China. By 1949, the communists had gained the advantage, and Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist army was on the brink of defeat. Zhang and his remaining forces left mainland China and escaped to the island of Taiwan, where they established a new government. On the mainland, the victorious communist regime, called the People's Republic of China, was officially proclaimed on October 1st, 1949. The pioneering work of Sun Yat-sen helped bring about tremendous change in China. Sun's courageous efforts to create a modern democratic state led to the historic end of the rule of the imperial dynasties. But Sun's decision to allow the communists into his government gave them a foothold in China that ultimately helped them take power. Today, Sun Yat-sen is revered in both China and Taiwan and remembered as the first great leader of modern China.